you know, um, it's basically then going to be oily spaghetti, oily tortelloni, tortellini whatsoever, um, oily pasta in general, oily noodles. Good morning, we are booze. You know, um, I'm, I'm wearing a little busted jacket from, from Cospa this time. I have not worn it yet in any video. Um, I don't know why. I don't want people to think I'm a weep. No, um, just for your information, this anime is the worst piece of shit ever, but um, the, the cat is kind of cute, cute cat. We are going to um, take a look at the Euler Mascaroni constant yet again. And next time I would like to derive a few more. My, my glasses are a bit weird. We are going to derive a few more um, expressions of the Euler Mascaroni constant, Euler Macaroni constant next time. This time we are going to find out that there's a connection between the Riemann zeta function and the Euler Mascaroni constant and also it's going to be yet another limit definition of this whole thing. A quite exotic one if I may say so myself. We are going to dive right in. At first I would like to introduce to you guys the generalized Euler constants and they come in quite natural, okay? They are just a generalization of the Euler Macaroni constant. You know, um, it's basically then going to be oily spaghetti, oily tortelloni, tortellini whatsoever, um, oily pasta in general, oily noodles. We are going to derive the oily noodles today. We are going to take a look at the generalized oily constants. I'm going to give it the index R, okay? Gamma R is thus the limit as n approaches infinity of, we are going to make use of the generalized harmonic numbers, okay? Those are basically also just a special case of generalized harmonic numbers where r is equal to 1. Maybe you can already see where this is going. Minus, hmm, how could we generalize the natural log of n even more? Well, for that, I would like to take a look at one of the many definitions of the logarithmus naturalis as an integral. We can define the natural log of n in this case as nothing other but this integral dt over t. Okay, if you integrate this, you are going to get natural log of n minus natural log of one, but this is going to vanish, natural log of n. Now, we would like to parameterize it basically. We want to put our little index r right here. This is the trick to the whole thing. And it does make perfect sense that we would do so, because if you take a look at the generalized harmonic numbers, it does make sense that you would do so. So from one to n, of dt over t to the r of power. Now, what are generalized harmonic numbers? I'm going to write them out for you. This is the limit as n approaches infinity. I'm going to denote it as capital N. And this is the infinity boy, k being greater or equal to one of one over k to the r of power. Okay, I hope you can see the connection. Our sum is basically just an approximate integral, basically, and we are having the same sum and integrand. So overall, um, there's a deep connection between those two, from one to n dt over t to the r of power. And now it's, yeah, just going to be regular integration on this one, because this allows for a very nice antiderivative, meaning oily pasta is thus the limit of the generalized harmonic numbers. I just wrote it out for you guys if you are not familiar with all of this. Also, this is not going to go to infinity. This is, uh, this is bounded between n and 1. Okay, never mind. So h and r minus, okay, what's the antiderivative of this? This is t to the negative r power, raise the exponent by 1 and then divide by this uh, exponent. So t to the 1 minus r of power over 1 minus r from 1 to n. If you put one into here, it's just going to be one over one minus r. Negative, negative becomes positive. So overall, we are going to be left with the limit of the generalized harmonic numbers minus, um, I'm going to put this one first, one over one minus r, and then minus hmm, n to the one minus r of power over one minus r. Now, what about the convergence? Maybe we can do something with our limit. Maybe we can track the limit into here. If we let our generalized harmonic numbers go to infinity, then we are going to end up with this. And do you know what this is? What I wrote before? 
is the Riemann zeta function of R. So if our limit goes to infinity, we are going to be left with the Riemann zeta function of R. But what would happen if our R, for example, were negative mm, n to the, for example, fourth power, when n goes to infinity then? This is not good. This wouldn't be any good. This would diverge in a way, okay? Riemann zeta function also, our r, if it were to were, for example, negative three, k to the third power overall, when this goes to infinity, all of this would diverge, okay? It would just diverge rapidly to positive infinity overall, I suppose. Now, okay, doesn't work for negative r's. What about r being equal to zero? Well, n to the first power, doesn't work if the limit goes to infinity. What about r being between one, okay, so it, it can be equal to one, then we would have this to the zero of power, this would cancel out with this one, then we would have Riemann zeta where r goes to one. Huh. Doesn't work, Riemann zeta is only defined for r being strictly greater than one if you are not talking about analytic continuation. So between zero and one, it also doesn't work out because we would end up with a positive exponent. But if our r were to wear, for example, 1.5, then we would have a negative exponent on our n. If n goes to infinity, that would go to zero overall. Also, so this goes to zero. Also, Riemann zeta would be um, defined. It would converge and we would end up with plus one over one minus r. All of this converges for r being strictly greater than one. Okay, coolio. Um, now we have this right here. This is a definition for our generalized um, Euler numbers. But we would like to get back to our Euler Mascheroni constant. Our Euler Mascheroni constant is basically just those generalized Euler constants where r is equal to one. Okay, this is what we have found out at the beginning. But if r goes to one, if the limit would exist from both sides, then we would allow r to be equal to one, but this doesn't work out, okay? We can't have r being equal to one. This is why we want the limit to be only approached from one plus, okay? From the right to the left, for example, two and then one plus, but we don't want to reach one completely because this limit is actually defined for the Riemann zeta function, but then, we would have one over one minus one, that's one over zero, it's not good. Let us fiddle around with this right here a bit more. Maybe we can turn it into the geometric series. But if our r goes to one plus one from the right, then we would have another problem. Our absolute value of r would be greater than one, meaning we can turn it into a geometric series. We are going to use a trick that I have used before on integrals, if we have one over one minus r. Then we can actually factor out on the denominator in r, meaning this is one over r times, okay, if we also factor out a negative, then we would get one over one minus one over r. And then if we have big values of r, everything greater than one, okay, we are not approaching one completely. We are going to be always an epsilon a neighborhood away an epsilon um, distance away from, from O1, then this is actually in the radius of convergence, meaning we can turn this into the geometric series. So negative one over R, and then K being greater or equal to zero of one over R to the kth power. Also what we can do, we can make a shift of index. Um, let, we want this to start at one because we simply want to bring this into um, the same summation as the Riemann zeta function. It's, if everything converges synchronously, um, so at the same rate, then that should be fine. We can bring it into the same um, sum notation, series notation. So let's say um, k as a transformation, k minus one must go to, no, k plus one must go to k, meaning overall we are going to end up with negative one over r. That means our new k it's going to be k minus one up here in the exponent. I hope you can see where all of this came from. Our running index starts at one. I'm just going to make a simple index shift. So one over r to the k minus one power. Meaning overall, 
this negative one, and this is going to cancel out. Okay, so we have r over r is going to be one. We are going to be left with this overall. And now we are going to pack all of this into our generalized Euler constants. Also, we are going to take the limit as it approaches one from only one direction, meaning overall. Euler of macaroni is nothing other than the limit as, okay, this time we are going to have r approaches one plus of our generalized Euler numbers is going to be equal to. Okay, we are going to have our Riemann zeta function. Also, I'm going to denote this limit as capital L this time, k being greater or equal to one of one over k to the r of power. This is our Riemann zeta function. Also, minus, and then we are going to have this k being greater or equal to one of one over r to the kth power, distributing this kth power into here. Like I said, we want to bring this together as a sum, meaning overall, only mascaroni, the new definition is the limit as r approaches one from only one direction of this absolutely fabulous infinite series, k to the r of power minus one over r to the k of power. And this in itself looks actually quite weird. Okay, this is our result. This is a new definition of our boy, Oli Macaroni. It has the Riemann zeta function in it. Also, we have this weird shift of base and exponent. Isn't this quite curious? And, and it's only a one-sided limit. This is something that does work out. This is one of the major results of analytic number theory. It pops up so often when doing integration. It even pops up in regularization problems. Everywhere in, in physics is extremely interesting. And this is one of the many definitions of the euler mascheroni constant. We are also going to take a look soon at an infinite series representation of the euler macaroni constant. It's one of the greatest results Euler ever derived back then. And yeah, I, I want you guys to know about this one because it's absolutely fabulous. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, buy those teachers I create or support channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a flamble day. Ciao.